The Bible teaches Christians to be frugal about their own needs, but generous with others. But one thing the Bible warns against, not only of the person who wants to be rich, who loves the acquisition of things, but also the person who is the miser. And uh, my son David was speaking on Sunday from Proverbs 23, and there we read, Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. This is a very common phrase applied in all different contexts. As he thinks, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. But it specifically is applied here to the miser. And the idea is that the miser begrudges you even the mouthful of food you're eating at his table. It's impossible to have fellowship with someone who is incapable of sharing anything with you. And so while he says eat and drink, he doesn't mean it. He doesn't want you to eat up his food. And it's a sad, sad condition when a man becomes a miser. When I was taking young men preaching, a young friend of mine and I, we were visiting a brother in a city which will go unnamed. He had had a very comfortable living all his life, and he owned a couple of health food stores. He wasn't lacking for funds, but he had a very hard time sharing it. And uh, he took the two of us out to a restaurant. And the first thing he did was highly recommend the cheapest <laughs> meal on the menu. And we both knew what he was doing, and so we began this little game where we would uh, look at the next price up and say, well, I don't know, I've spent a long time since I had that. That that looks really delicious. And then I would come in and take the next price up, and we worked our way all the way up to the highest price, talking about how wonderful it would be to buy something like that. We both ended up buying the chicken, which he had recommended were the cheapest. We didn't want him to to spoil his dinner. But I th thought, what a sad thing to uh, to long for hospitality, to long for fellowship, but be incapable of giving it because you begrudge every mouthful of food that others are eating. And uh, I wanted to tell you a little story. My grandfather, he was the correspondent of the local fellowship in St. Catharines. This was way back um, they had built their first building and uh, they had borrowed some money from a Christian man who was miserly. He was a real penny pincher. And eventually the assembly had, had taken an offering that was sufficiently large for them to pay off the whole indebtedness, the whole loan. And so it was my grandfather's responsibility to take a check with the total amount out to this fellow's little cottage in the countryside. And in those days, you had to put a two-cent stamp on a check, and that would pay for the return trip for the check to go back to the bank of origin. And uh, my grandfather didn't put the stamp on the check. What he did do was empty his pockets of all his change and put in one $100 bill into his pocket which was a lot of money back in those days. He made his way out to this fellow's little cottage and uh, thanked him for the loan to the local fellowship and gave him the check, the total amount. And as the old fellow looked at it, he a little frown broke his brow and, and uh, my grandfather said, was that the wrong amount? No, no, that's the amount. Well, what seems to be the problem? Well, you didn't put the two cent stamp on it. It was quite a large sum of money, this repayment of this loan. And my grandfather said, no, I guess I didn't. And the man said, well, you'll have to pay the two cents. And my grandfather said, well, I, I only have a hundred dollar bill in my pocket. And the old fellow said, well, that's all right. He took the hundred dollar bill, laid it on the kitchen table 
and began to scurry through his house, all the little drawers and pockets, until eventually there was a big pile of change, $99.98 on the table. And my grandfather said to him, you know, if that's what you have to do to get it, I don't want it. Now, my grandfather always had enough, enough not only for his own needs, but enough to be generous with others. And God will see to it that if we are generous with others, that he will entrust things to us so that we can be good stewards. But what a sad thing it is to undermine your own fellowship with others because fellowship, by its very definition, entails sharing. And if you can't share, then you really can't fellowship. And so you end up becoming entrapped in your own little castle of your own making with your piles of money and no friends. And that's no way to live. And so we are warned against trying to break through that barrier. If we go to have fellowship with a miser, we're putting him in the untenable position of saying something with his lips that he doesn't mean with his heart. God help us to, to spare us not only from being careless with our money on the one extreme, but also being miserly with our money on the other. Be frugal with your own needs, but be generous with others, and God will bless you indeed.